You all can hear me in the back, right? All right. The first thing we're going to start with, and let me say this. You don't have to recite it, but I want you to at least all stand. We're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance, and after we say it, I'm going to tell you why. All right? So you all stand, please. All right, we'll let the uh, young ladies finish signing in first. Huh? Now she feels like all eyes are on her. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one country, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now, please be seated. The reason I started with the Pledge of Allegiance, how many people actually realize we're the only country in the world that pledges to our flag? Does anybody know why we pledge to our flag and no other country does? I guess that's a no. <laughs> All right, the reason we pledge to our flag isn't because we have our government controlling the world and everything. It's because of what our beliefs are in the flag. Our beliefs in the flag have so much meaning in our culture as a US citizen, or in that fact, anybody that's living here. Whether you, you, you've come here to go to school, you're looking to get your visa, you're looking just to get a decent education, or to get away from the strife of your home country. The flag has a lot of purpose. All right, the first thing I want to do is Go over to Pledge Allegiance and break it down into pieces. And I'm going to tell you why Congress and why it was written. But before I do that, I have a question. Who knows why the Pledge of Allegiance came about? Believe it or not, it was a school contest. All right? The school contest was whoever came up with the best words to honor our flag it would be used on Flags Day and Veterans Day. So it, it was decided that this one particular school uh, won with the best words. And then the military and Congress and the Senate and everybody else says, well, that's great, but sh shouldn't we have some sort of meaning to what the words all mean? And believe it or not, that student came back and felt this is what it meant to them, and that's why they wrote it that way. Congress and the Senate looked it over, fine-tuned it, and it came down to the meaning for each sentence of the, ple of the uh, pledge. Let me read it to you. I pledge allegiance. I promise to be faithful and true. Promise my loyalty. To the flag. To the emblem that stands and represents everyone. Of the United States of America. Now, it says of the United States, of America was taken out. And that's important because how many people think of this as the American flag? Be honest. You're wrong. And let me explain why. How many continents do we have the word America in it? Two. There's 40 countries in South America and something like 12 to 17 in North America. So when you say America, you could be talking Brazil, Canada, Peru. Think about that. So when you talk about our flag, this is United States of America. And you can't forget that of, because this doesn't represent two continents. This represents our nation. That being said, they changed it in, uh, from the wording of the United States of America and cut it back to the United States, because Everybody understands that the United States is part of North America. And that stands for all 50 states, each of them individual, but they all combined represent the flag. And now, on the next phrase of America, 
came back as a separate phrase later on in Congress because they felt, look, we don't want to run it all together. We want to stop, say United States, and then remind people where we are in the world. So they started out with the United States of America all in one breath. They took and they cut it back to just the United States. And then they put back in the words of America to make sure they knew where we were in the world. And to the Republic. Well, the Republic means I pledge my loyalty to the government that in itself, a Republic, a form of government where the people are sovereign. That means we are not controlled by anybody but our own nation. And when America started out, it was all colonies. And we had probably 17 different countries controlling what we consider America now. For which it stands, the government being represented by this flag to which I promise loyalty. And the nation under God. A lot of people have a problem with this and they fought it back and forth. The 50 individual states are united as a single republic under the divine providence of God. In other words, we're a nation that believe we are not the almighty. We're a nation that believes there is a power higher than us and we have no right to say that we are the God of the world. And that's why they put the words of God in there. To make sure people understood that yes, we do believe in religion. You have the freedom of religion in this country. But to also know that our flag and our nation isn't above God. All right? That's why that phrase is in there. Indivisible speaks for itself. We are a country of 50 states that came together to form under one union, our one union jack. The union jack on our flag is the blue with the stars. Okay, that's the union jack. Remember that term, because the union jack is going to come back up later on when I mention something else. With liberty, the people of this, this nation be afforded the freedom to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. We believe in our country, your life should be judged by your own deeds. Not by what you're forced to do, not by what a dictatorship tells you to do, and not by some cleric saying you will learn this religion or else. You have the freedom to choose. And justice. Each and every person is entitled to be treated justly, fairly, and according to proper law and principle. At one time, our nation had lords. Above the lord was the king of England. They decided the lord, by his territory, what you could and could not do. The king decided what everybody could, uh, could and could not do. And you were executed in some cases if you didn't follow the Roman Catholic way, or if you didn't follow what the king was doing, and we decided enough. This country is about freedom and choice. Without freedom and choice, we're nobody. And it's for all. These principles are afforded to every American, regardless of race, religion, color, creed, or whether or not you have a visa. We don't care if you're a U.S. citizen or not. If you're in our country, you're afforded the same liberties and principles as anybody else. Because as far as we're concerned, you're in our country, you're a guest, and we're proud to have you. That's why the Statue of Liberty is out there to welcome you. Now, I mentioned the Union Jack. And the reason I mentioned the Union Jack, does anybody know what a bunting is? You ever see these half circles, and it's got the red, white, and blue colors in it, and people use it as banners here, there, everywhere else? How many realize that 90% of those buntings are wrong? 
Now, why would they be wrong? Again, nobody? The Union Jack, if you look at the placement, is always at the top. The stripes are always at the bottom. On a bunton, that Union Jack should be at the top. That Union Jack represents the unity of our nation. By putting it in the middle, like most buntons do, because they want to balance the colors, basically what they're saying is they've broken our unity. They've broken what our nation stood for. So even in the buntings that they use for parade decorations, 90% of them are wrong. The Union Jack is supposed to be at the top, not in the center, and in some cases at the bottom. That Union Jack belongs at the top for a reason. That represents our unity as a combined effort for our freedom and loyalty. Now, do you realize, although we live in a country of freedom, we actually have a flag code that was put into act by Congress and voted on by the Senate and voted on by the House of Representatives and every citizen basically got a chance to vote by the way our system works. That flag code is Title IV, Chapter 1, the flag. And if you want, you can look it up under any uh, web search under Title IV, Chapter 1, and it will come to the United States of American flag. And it will tell you the different standards of the flag. Like, the flag should be displayed on all days, especially on New Year's Day, January 1st. In the Inauguration Day, January 20th. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, which happens to be the third Monday in January. And President Nixon was the one that took all the Mondays and made sure that it happened on a Monday. The reason for that, he thought it would promote uh, travel, promote uh, more money amongst the country, and better our economy. All right. The one day to this day that Congress cannot ever change is the day I'm proudest of, is Veterans Day. That will always be the 11th month, the 11th day, and the 11th hour has a particular meaning because that's when the armistice was signed in 1918 for World War I and in the War of All Wars. Well, we all know that wasn't the War of All Wars. But anyways, to go further on the list, Lincoln's birthday, February 12th. Washington's birthday, third Monday in February. Easter Sunday is veritable from state to state. Although Congress and the Senate put it in there, it goes by freedom of religion, so you do not have to flag, fly the flag on Easter if you don't want to. That's your freedom that's offered to you by what it represents. Mother's Day, second Sunday in May. Armed Forces Day, third Saturday in May. Memorial Day. Now here's a tricky one. What is different about Memorial Day than all the other holidays about the flag? You got part of it right. It's at half mask, but only to a certain time. On Memorial Day, the flag has to go to the top of the mask at all times before it's displayed at half mask. That's to signify this is our nation and this is what we're honoring. If it just went up to half mass, this is what we're honoring, we forgot about our nation. So when the flag is raised, it goes fully up and then comes down to half mask. And that is the reason why. We honor our nation, bring it to half mass to honor what we want to honor. That being said, Memorial Day only allows the flag to half mass until noontime. Why is that? If you think about what I just said about the mass going up to full staff and then coming back down to half mass, if we went beyond noontime, we're giving more honor to the person that died or we're honoring than to our nation. So Memorial Day is memorial of all veterans, of what our government stands for and what the flag stands for. 
All right? So it's only half mass to noon time. All right? And then you're supposed to bring it back up to full mask. That's the only holiday that happens on, and that's the reason why. The other days are Memorial Day, Flag Day, and here's one they just put in uh, two years ago, Father's Day. And the reason I mentioned Father's Day, Father's Day was never considered a holiday for the flag because so many men were in the armed forces, they figured the men were already honored with the flag, so we didn't have to fly it on Father's Day because we're already honoring them on another day. Independence Day, July 4th, Labor Day, which is the first Monday in September, Columbus Day, second Monday in October, Navy Day, October 27th, Veterans Day, November 11th, Thanksgiving, fourth Thursday in November. That was changed. It used to be the third Thursday. They've now changed it to the fourth Thursday. Christmas Day, December 25th, and in any such other days that may be proclaimed by the President of the United States are the birthday of states. Now, that being said, there was a governor, and he, he made a big story about it and stuff. And let's see if anybody remembers Governor Christie. Do you remember what state he was from? New Jersey. What did the Governor Christie do that was totally against the flag code, totally against what our nation stands for? Governor Christie decided that every person that was important to him, he was going to bring the flag to half mass. Now, granted, these people were great people, and I, I loved them just like anybody else. Louis Armstrong, he wanted the flag at half mask. And uh, Ofer Winfrey, he wanted the flag at half mast. So he did in his state. And very indiscreetly, Congress in uh, the president's office reminded him, the flag is at half mast and decided by the president and governors for state holidays. State holidays. The flag can be flown at half mast for any veteran that dies being the fact that they're honoring the nation and standing up for what the flag stands for. So it's not that the veteran has more rights than anybody else. It's the fact he's protecting those rights for everybody. And that's why they honor him with half mask. All right, Governor Christie has since not flown the flag at half mask for anybody else. Now, the flags at the Capitol House and flags throughout other places that fly 24 hours a day. Now, does anybody know when and how a flag is supposed to be flown 24 hours a day? Excuse me? Anywhere. Anybody or anyone can flag, fly a flag 24 hours a day. The difference is the flag has to be recognizable and be illuminated or be made of a material that is weathering. In other words, you can't have a cotton flag and have all the colors running off the flag. That's disrespectful. All right. The flag has to be illuminated, and that goes back to colonial times where they had to recognize the flag so they didn't kill the wrong people. All right. So the flag is flown at night has to have some sort of light on it. And they've all come to modern technology where they're now allowing on the rope that hoists the flag, or what's called the lanyard, they're putting uh, solar lights. So what happens, you leave the flag up there, it charges all day in the light, and at night the light comes on automatically because it's solar powered. And I said, what a great idea. You know, you don't have to go out there and waste all your electricity throwing a light up on your flag. Not only that, a lot of flags are on high staffs, and it, as you get older, and I'm not saying I'm old, but it, it becomes a little more difficult to get the flag up and down that, uh, that pulley, especially when it rusts. So it was just a great solution that they came up with that Congress approved. Now, 
Congress has decided certain places would be honored 24 hours a day, and these places were the only ones that list as an actual official list. That list is only because Congress wanted everybody to remember these particular places. Does not mean these are the only places that can fly 24 hours a day. These are the places that are of special meaning to our country. Those are Fort McHenry National Monument and Historic Shrine, Baltimore, Maryland. Flag House Square, which is on Pratt Streets in Baltimore, Maryland. United States Marine Corps Memorial, Hirojima. Now, we all know Hirojima Monument, right? All the Marines are standing there trying to bring the flag up on that rock. I know some of you may have seen the picture or remember it. That's what they're talking about. Okay, now, town of Lexington, Mass, on the green. That's where the first shot was heard that started our revolution. That's why Lexington, Mass. Massachusetts has a lot of places. The flag flies 24 hours a day, more than any other state or any other place in the country. All right, the White House, of course. Uh, Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., and there is three other places that are up for uh, proclamation in Massachusetts, which would be, include places that the uh, Civil Wars were fought and places where the flag is to be honored because of so many that were killed to stand up for its rights. That hasn't been officially approved yet. Now, I have a question that's really going to shock everybody here. You know this flag has 50 stars, correct? Yes. All right, that being said, Congress has authorized flags up to how many stars? 56. And everybody's looking at me with uh, why? Their belief was, in the event that other territories became a state of our country. They wanted to have the design approved and ready before they became state. In fact, there is a movement that's been going on now for the last 10 years for Puerto Rico. And those of you that are from Puerto Rico will be surprised that they actually already have two different documentations showing the uh, the flag for Puerto Rico if they had become state because there's a movement that's still fighting for them to become statehood and <coughs> excuse me um, it's hot in here The reason I mentioned uh, Puerto Rico, and it's nothing against anybody here that's from Puerto Rico or anything. Um, they have a code of ethics and a code of right to statehood. Puerto Rico missed that right because they weren't self-sufficient to withstand on their own income. All right. So although they do very well with tourism and everything else, they weren't able to stand on their own rights. And the other thing that was a big, big problem in Puerto Rico. They didn't want to pay property taxes or pay taxes back into the Commonwealth of our nation. So they refused to pay the taxes back into the Commonwealth of the United States of America. So the statehood was denied when they first attempted. But the movement still goes on. I evidently can't find the picture. It's behind another slide in my book here. But basically, if you look at this flag, what they wanted to do with Puerto Rico is, if you notice, the flag itself is staggered with uh, rows of five and six to make up the uh, 50s. All right. They were basically just going to change one of the rows so that it, it altered. And see how it stops with the uh, six on the bottom? It would basically stop with a uh, five. So they're just changing the order to add that extra one as far as the staggering. The thing that Puerto Rico wanted for the flag was a circle with the stars radiating out from the center point. Both 
of them were approved but never decided on. Proclamation was never done because they never became statehood. So it's still on the books. But Puerto Rico is listed in Congress, if they ever do become a state, of where they're going to be placed as a star on the flag. Stars on the flag are five-pointed. Were they always five-pointed? No. George Washington had originally done like the British had done. Oh, that's great. He had done six-pointed stars, but they weren't like regular stars. <laughs> it happens. All right, and basically what happens is Yeah, okay, that's fine. Thank God I can do a lot of this from memory. <laughs> By the way, I am a BCC student here also. All right. I just happened to be a veteran that complained about the way the flag was presented one day. And one of the good professors here at the college says, you can't just complain. You've got to show them why it's wrong. And to this day, I hold what he says to my heart. If you're ever going to complain or bitch about something, all right? <laughs> Stand behind what you say. Show them why you feel it's wrong. And that's how this started, all right? And I can't thank him enough because it, it, it showed a lot of people the message that is normally forgotten about why our flag stands for what it does. Thank I you. I have page numbers, so I guessed. No, that's fine. Okay. Um, one of the things that happened was we have uh, at least 18 colonies of the United States. These colonies all have the right to vote currently. All right. Any of these colonies, if they meet all the criteria by Congress and the Senate to become states, may become a state. And that is why our Congress has set it up so that the flag can be designed up to 56 stars. Doesn't mean it will ever happen because a lot of these people are happy to just be a colony because it's almost like getting all the rights of an American citizen without having to pay the taxes to the White House. Hey, face it, it saves them money. Okay, now, there was a mess that I just made on the floor. <laughs> That's okay. The problem is, is I use document protectors. I usually laminate them. Document protectors are like ice. They slide everywhere. Yeah. OK. The term old glory. Do you know where it came from? Old glory, believe it or not, was a ship captain. And let me read you a, a very quick story. Most of it I've memorized. Captain. William Driver was a shipmaster of Salem, Massachusetts. Gee, Massachusetts again. All right, in 1831. He had made many journeys on a brigette, which was basically a, what we consider a freighter today. Uh, and the freighter was called Charles Daggett. Okay, now, one would climb into with the rescue of mutineers and the bounty and what have you. He stayed true to what he believed in. He believed in our country. He believed in what our flag stood for. And they noticed that every time he went out, he would uh, fly his flag from his ship. And if they knew it was an American ship, they used to raid it because the Americans had everything come into our country. We're the biggest consumer of the goods in the world, even to this day. So. To fly the American flag on a freighter at his time was almost like a signal to the pirates, come and get me, I got all the wealth. He didn't care. He flew the flag anyways. So one day, noticing his flag was tattered and noticing that it was, he was in dire need of a new flag, they took and they gave him the brand new statehood flag, which had added a couple of stars at the time. And they brought it to him. And then on February 25th, 1862, 
he hoisted it into the mask of his ship. And he looked at the flag flying freely in the wind and said, Oh, glory. It's beautiful. That term, Oh, glory, to this day stands from that shipmaster of Salem, Massachusetts. So the term, Oh, glory, came from his love of what our nation stood for and the fact that he didn't care if the pirates knew he was American to fly the flag and how thankful he was to have the privilege of the new flag flying on his ship. You know, if you have that much pride in the flag, I would have given him my flag. Now, the thing that uh, Lydia and the International Club likes me to uh, stand most on is uh, handing out these brochures I used to get from the American Legion and the VFW. Well, with like everything else in the world, they've cut back on their funding also. So I couldn't get the, uh, the brochures to hand out like I used to. Uh, last year, I handed out everybody a brochure. But if you want, you go to the American Legion dot org or vfw dot org everything I talked about will be there okay these brochures I'll hand around all right but I'll need them back and I'm just going to uh, touch on the placement of the flag and why now when I first came in here the flag was what did I do Nobody picked it up right as way and said, I broke colors. I just did that purposely to see if you'd remember what I talked about. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let you go. All right. All right. Unfortunately, your professor can't give you an extra five points. Actually, a professor said that if anybody caught it, they'd give an extra five points. I won't tell you who the professor was, though. All right. Well... Yeah, Gabe Pereira. Gabriel Pereira is the one that got me started on doing this. Anyways, getting back to what we were saying. The flag is to my right. All right? The reason the flag is to my right isn't because I'm honoring the flag. It's because I'm speaking about it and it's presented out to you. It's called the flag's own right. All right? When I came in here, the flag was up on the step here. Where would it be? It would be to my left. Why is that? Because the flag is now representing the audience looking out this way. So the flag is at its own right because now it's at your right because it's looking out from you guys. Right now, it's looking out for me, so it's to my right. This is called the flag's own right. All right? And if you ever go to a public building, whether it be the federal building, uh, a school building, or what have you, you're walking up the steps, and you look, and the flag's to the left. And you're thinking, well, wait a minute. I always remember the flag's supposed to be to the right. Well, the flag is to the right, because it's the building looking out at you, so the flag is at its own right. And that is a term that a lot of people forget, the flag's own right. Now, if I was to have a flag behind me, up on this uh, curtain, or say it was a solid wall, the Union Jack, again, the blue of the stars, would either be hanging down, and the Union Jack would be up in this corner, the stripes over here. If it was hanging, coming across, the Union Jack would be up in the corner with the stripes going this way. On a street, it's always remembered north and east. That means the Union Jack points either north or east, depending on which way the street's running. So a street that's going north to south, the Union Jack would point west. The street going east to, um, right, no, it would be pointing east. Just remember north and east. 
basically the opposite compass directions would be it. Now, a flag is dropped over a coffin to honor one that has deceased, usually for veterans and government members. Can a flag be placed over a coffin of anybody else? Huh? Didn't they do it for Whitney Houston? And there was yeah. a big stink about it or something. All right. Do you know what our Congress says? If you love the flag that much and want it on your coffin, this is a country of freedom. We don't even care if you're a U.S. citizen. The flag can be over your coffin. All right. Yes, there was a stink with Whitney Houston. She brings up a good point because a lot of people thought and still think it's only to honor veterans and government officials. Well, that was the tradition, and it was done that way because those were the people that stood up to make sure the truth of the flag was beheld. Truth of the matter is, our country wants you to love our flag and the meaning of our flag, and our country, and I say ours, because everybody that's sitting here, we're all part of the same country. We're all part of what we believe in what that stands for. And I don't care where you come from, what lifestyle, color, religion, or anything else. We all believe in what that stands for. And that's what's important to Congress and the unity of what our flag means. So a flag can be placed on anybody's coffin. It's just recognized that it's normally going on the veteran's coffin or a government official. And that goes back to George Washington's times when England would only put it on officials and England would only do it that way. So our country started doing it that way. And then we says, wait a minute, we're not England. We're fighting for our independence. We're fighting for our freedom. To say that the flag only goes on the officials we want to go on, it's like breaking our freedom or breaking the reason we broke free from England. The flag can be placed on anybody's coffin. Now, if you notice, I don't have them on both shoulders anymore. I have the American flag. Yeah. Well, when we were overseas, we had to wear it on both sides. That's why I was looking to see if it was on both sides. All right. What do you notice about the flag? All right. If I was to have the flag, which I no longer wear because I'm back in the United States, on this shoulder, which way would the stripes point? I'm standing like this. Would the stripes point towards the flag? Or would the stripes point out the door? Who said that? You're correct. The reason for that is the flag stripes are supposed to wave behind you. Otherwise, it means you're in retreat. So to wear a patch on your shoulder with the stripes pointing in front of me is almost saying, I'm a coward. I don't believe in my flag. They made the mistake during Desert Shield, Desert Storm, where they made the flags backwards. And they had one flag pointing this way and one flag pointing the other way. Thank God for General Swazkoff. He says, no, that's wrong. I want those flags. And he had a flag burning ceremony in Iraq. They thought that we were going to, you know, just jump ship and join their cleric group and stuff. And it was basically, he was just trying to honor the flag for what it stood for. But the flag, whenever you wear it, either on a car, on your uniform, or on a, even a, a lot of baseball teams wear the flag now on their, their sleeves and stuff. The stripes always point towards their back. That represents, I honor the flag, I am not going to walk away from it. Because if it's pointing the other way, it basically means you're walking away from our flag. And I would be the first one to tell you you're wrong. OK. The last thing I have, and let's see if anybody knows if it's official or if it's just something for an honorary thing. <sighs> When you fold a flag, the flag is folded in such a way that it ends up with 13 folds. Official. 
Ja. There's another page in this mess that looks like this in the big print. Yeah. Back when the flag was folded into a uh, triangle, and this is even done over a coffin, do you know what it's supposed to represent when it's all folded up? It's supposed to represent the old tricorder hats that the colonials wore. The colonials wore this three-corner hat because it was so different from what the British wore. The British wore these furry hats that stood straight up. All right. So in the process, the flag was folded to make sure it came out a triangle. And the flag starts out with these folds. Now, I asked a question. I gave you some time to think about it. Is it official with the meaning for each fold? To take a guess. I think I was in junior ROTC, but that was almost 20 years ago. I think I remember it being official. <laughs> no, it is not. It's not? No. The folding of the flags in each fold was given a designation for the folding of each fold as a something that ROTC, veterans, and other government officials thought was just the right thing to do to say, we're folding this flag for these reasons. It wasn't official. It was just something that was so deep embedded in the heart of the veterans, junior ROTC, ROTC and everything, that they, like everything else the, the military does, they have some sort of uh, rite of passage almost of what they do. I'm going to read you. Have you ever wondered why the flag of the United States is folded 13 times? When it is lowered, or when it is folded and handed to the next of kin at the burial of the veteran. Here is the meaning, although not official, that has been brought into life by those that love the flag so much. The first fold of our flag is the symbol of life. Life that we shared our blood and tears for. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in that eternal life. When they speak of eternal life, they speak of the fact that we are going to carry the message of our freedom and our loyalty and our purity even beyond our grave to a higher being than what our flag stands for. The third fold is an honor and remembrance of the veterans dependent on our ranks who gave a portion of their lives for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. And if you think about the words, for life, liberty, and justice for all, all right, those words sound familiar? Life, we just spoke about. Justice, the American flag means justice for the world. That's why America is so quick to go to other countries to make sure they get the justice they deserve from the dictatorship that they may be squashed under. Liberty for all means the fact that we don't care that you're from another country. We don't want your resources. We don't want what you have. But we have an internal belief that you should have freedom. You should have happiness. Because the world without freedom and happiness is not a world at all. It's hell. And that's why those words are so dear. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature. For as the American citizen's trusting, it is as to him we turn in times of peace as as well in times of war for his divine guidance. What divine guidance are we speaking of? God. All right? Because our divine guidance although we believe in our flag and all its true meanings and stuff, we don't hold it above 
God. We hold it as our nation what we believe in. But the extreme being of this world comes first. The fifth fold is a tri tribute to our country. For in the words of Stephen Decatur, our country in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. And as I did in my speech yesterday on Veterans Day, and I spoke of the veterans, the first words out of my mouth is, a veteran doesn't do it for his government, doesn't do it for his country. He does it for the meanings of the flag. Because if you think about it, your elected officials change every two to four years. So one person may believe in one thing, one person may believe in something else. God behold, this always means one thing. What the blood, sweat, and tears of my comrades fought for. And what it believes in for you to have the truth, justice, and purity of our country. The sixth fold is where our heart lies. It is with our heart we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Sorry, I didn't catch that either. Um, Sixfold. I'm sorry, I dropped them in there out of order. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all enemies, whether it be found within or without the borders of our republic. And if you think about McHayden, he blew up the Oklahoma uh, building, the federal building. He was a homegrown terrorist. So when we speak of terrorists, we're not speaking about a religion. We're not speaking about a group. We're speaking about people that are trying to take away the meaning of our flag. All right? Take away the liberty and the freedom of religion, the liberty and the freedom to be happy. That's what we call a terrorist. And we have our own terrorists right in this country, and we have terrorists in other countries that try to take away what the American belief is. So get that right. Terrorist does not mean one culture. It means anybody that stands against what we believe in the meaning of our flag. That's what a terrorist is. And I think that's important because so many people take it as, oh, it means that guy there or that guy there. No. The eighth fold is tribute to the one who entered in the valley of the shallow shadow of death, that we might see the light of day to honor mother for whom it flies on Mother's Day. The ninth fold is tribute to womanhood, for it has been through their faith, their love and loyalty, and the devotion that the character of men and women who made this great country has been molded. The tenth flow fold is to the father, for who he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. And you realize it says sons and daughters. This original meaning came about in colonial times before a lot of women really served. Because George Washington himself once said, without the wife's in womanhood surrounding us, the military will not live on. So even our great leader of our country realized back then, women always meant something to stand up for our country, whether they fought or not. Today we have many women in uniform. Today we have women that go into combat. But back then there wasn't any. But he wanted to make sure the woman was never forgotten. That eleventh fold is in the eyes of a Hebrew citizen, represents the lower portion of the seal of the King of David and King Solomon, and glorifies in his eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold 
is the eyes of the Christian citizen. It represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in their eyes God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When the flag is completely folded, the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our nation's motto, In God We Trust. After the flag is completely folded and tucked in, it takes on the appearance of the cocked hat of the colonial days. Remember how I said the triangle in their hats? It reminds us of the soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors, the Marines, who served under Captain Char uh, jo John Paul Jones, who were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States to stand for the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today. The next time you see a flag ceremony honoring someone who served our country, either in the armed forces or in the civilian population, such as the police, the fire department, the medics, whatever it may be, they have paid the ultimate sacrifice for all of us by honoring our country and our flag. That is said, author unknown. It is said that the original meaning of the folds of the flag was done by George Washington himself. And when they started doing the history of it and stuff, it was Martha, his wife, that wrote the meaning. So it's still up for grabs as far as who actually wrote it, but I honestly believe his wife wrote it. That being said, <coughs> Um, it is now 125. This is usually about the time I end, so that if there's any questions or anything, because like I said, I don't want to bore you all. Uh, is there any questions for anybody? Yes. Um, I actually just received a message um, from President Spraga. Um, he asked me to express his apologies for not being here. Um, okay. That was a debated, and first of all, Sprague is the president of our college. He's a Vietnam veteran that was shot down. So uh, President Sprague is a veteran himself, which I already knew. And the applause after the flag, I say yes. The applause is for the fact that we, we enjoy the fact we have our freedoms and stuff. In some cases, they are trying to say that you do not applaud because the national anthem is speaking for itself when the flag is flying. So I still applaud due to the fact I am so glad and I clap my hands and applaud to remember those that served and may not have come back from serving. So that's my answer. That's not the official answer, but that's my answer. That being said, everybody signed to make sure they get credit. Okay, uh, you can do that on your way out. There's a white paper for those that are not taking the CAD class, and there's a yellow paper for the people in uh, CAD. Thank you so much for coming, can we please express our appreciation to Sergeant First Class? Uh, thank you. I have one thing to say, and I want all of you to remember this, all right? This is not about me. This is about the message I want to give everyone. And just like I told the news reporter, the, the Standard Times has been here and the Boston Herald already about this event we're doing today, all right? I didn't want my name in the paper because then it becomes about me. This is supposed to be about the message that you understand what this all represents. And that's what it's supposed to be about only. All right, that being said, you're welcome to go. Any questions, I'll gladly answer them on your way up. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome.